Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out Kali Linux, the latest release 2021.2. This is the second release of the year for Kali and it usually comes in quarters. The first quarterly release was in February and now we're getting one in June. So let's check out what's new. One of the most exciting things perhaps is the new Kali tweaks tool, which we can use a terminal to launch. If I type in Kali tweaks, Here's the brand new tool, which can help out with things such as installing or uninstalling groups of tools based on your particular needs of Kali Linux. We can also enable or disable various different repositories that are available for Kali, depending on if you need to use them. For example, you can disable the bleeding edge branch if you don't want to use it. You have the shell and prompt. This one's quite exciting because now you can choose between bash or ZSH as your default shell environment. And finally, if you're using a virtual machine, you can configure that VM and tweak it a little bit just to run slightly better. So let's check out the shell and prompt. We can now configure the command prompt, set the default login shell or reset the shell configuration. Let's go back and check out some of the other changes here. Network repositories. It says here we can enable or disable the bleeding edge or experimental branches. We'll go right back. And finally, the meta packages. There are many groups of tools you can enable or disable here. The ones with stars are already enabled by default. Of course, you can remove them by taking the star or asterisk out, but this makes it really easy to add in the specific tools that you're looking for. Kali Tweaks is an exciting tool to see here in Kali Linux. I'm quite excited for it, and I hope that they keep adding on to this in the future because it will be able to help us customize our systems based on our needs instead of having all sorts of different configurations and groups of packages that we don't necessarily need depending on our use case. All right, let's get out of here real quick and keep moving on. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button for me. It really does help me out, especially if you enjoy these videos. Don't forget to do it. And the next new tool that we want to talk about is KA Boxer, which is also known as Kali's Application Boxer. So what is this? This is an applications container for packages that are integrated into the standard Kali package management system and can use apt commands in order to install or remove these containers. This is great for developers and packagers out there. Quite exciting to see. And here's the help menu so you can see some of the commands that you can run with KA Boxer. For me, KA Boxer did not come standard. I probably missed checking a box in order to install this tool, but it is something that they introduced last month in May and now has been introduced with 2021.2. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below for more Linux tips and tricks and operating system videos. By standard still, the default network repository here, we have the Kali rolling main non-free contribution mirror and using the new tool, Kali tweaks, we can add more in here. Getting out of here, not much has changed on the desktop environment itself. It's still using XFCE and and on the top right hand corner, we have a taskbar which we can reach the login and logout and various other tasks to restart, shut down, or manage your session. You have whether or not you want to set your computer into presentation mode and get to settings, set whether you want notifications off with do not disturb or different notification settings, volume control and microphone volume control, including audio settings, your wireless or wired connections, and a quick access calendar if you click on the time here. On the left hand side, on the desktop background, we have trash bin, the file system, and the home directory. If we open this up, we're here using Thunar, the file manager. But one thing that is new here is if you right click now, you are able to open something as a root user. Simply right click, hit run as root, type your password in, and now the system is even warning you that you are using the root count in which you have high privileges here. So make sure to use them wisely. A great little addition to access things a little quicker around the system with a root user. Continuing on to the left hand side up top, we still have our favorite start menu here where we can search through things, get to our various different pen testing and vulnerability testing tools. 
all your favorites still here. There have been, of course, a few added. Let's go through the new tools introduced to Kali. According to the website here, the new tools are Cloud Brute, which can help you find company infrastructure files and apps on the top cloud providers, DIR Search, Brute Force, Directories, Files on Web Servers, Ferox Buster, Simple Fast Recursive Content Discovery, Ghidra, Reverse Engineering Framework, Pasu, an AWS Exploitation Framework, Pierre a Kubernetes penetration tool, Quark Engine, an Android malware scoring system, and VS Code, the open source version, without the telemetry built in. What they say is they build that from source before giving it out. If you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button for me. Moving on, if you want to restore your minimized windows, you can click this button here. Launch the home directory and various other quick access features that pertain to the home user. So I could open up downloads in a terminal fairly quick. That was standard. We have mousepad a simple text editor available, the web browser, which is a slightly modified Firefox version 78.10 for Kali Linux. Right of that, we have a terminal launcher and finally the workspaces here. One new thing that you might have noticed is if you click this arrow now, we have other options underneath the arrow. We can launch our root terminal emulator by typing our password in and now we're logged in as a root user in the terminal. Quite a few updates with this new version. They seem to have focused on the user experience a little bit and some of the terminal tools. I'll switch back to my non-root user and let's talk about an easy way to now go between ZSH themes. Quite easy, press control P and you see there are two different themes here in which I can do sudo app install htop so we can check out the process usage here, but you can see how this looks in ZSH and we can switch real quickly back to the other profile by hitting control P. The P stands for profile, I believe, and you just toggle between two line prompts or one line prompts here. If I clear things out, we'll also install sudo apt install install NeoFetch so we can see system information real quick and so you can see what it looks like with the two liner. All right, let's view HTOP real quick and get a feeling for the resource usage here in Kali Linux 2021.2. The CPU is fluctuating between zero and 2%. The current memory usage with the uptime being 25 minutes is around 645 megabytes out of eight gigs, 91 tasks running, 170 threads and no swap space being used. Not bad, fairly light, especially for being opened up for 25 minutes. Let's move on by checking out NeoFetch. Here in NeoFetch, we can see that we have the 5.10 Kali 7 AMD 64 kernel. We've been up for about 25 minutes. There's 2,204 packages installed. We're using ZSH 5.8 as our shell. The desktop environment is XFCE 4.16. The window manager is XFWM. M4, the theme Kali Dark, and the terminal is the Q terminal. This is on an AMD 7 3700X, and we're still using around 650 megabytes out of eight gigs of memory. One thing that has been great about Kali lately is all the various cross-platform support that they've been working on. They have images for ARM, bare metal on your 64-bit machines, virtual machines, mobile, access to Kali on WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, live boot media, containers, and even for cloud infrastructure. It's refreshing to see so many different platforms available for a Linux distribution, especially one that focuses focuses on giving you pen testing and security testing tools. I'm glad that they keep improving on their cross-platform support. Also, the background has changed as you can see. And if we check out the desktop settings, you'll notice that there are a few more options available to us that weren't available before. Check them out because some of them are quite fun, personally like this one right here. And we've also seen updates to the Raspberry Pi version of Kali Linux. So make sure to look for improvements there if you're using Kali on Pi. Finally, the last thing I'll mention is that their kernel has now removed restriction to ports under 1023. So anywhere from zero to 1023 are now available TCP and UDP because they decided most of the users of Kali aren't really running servers and should have availability to those ports for testing purposes. So that's now patched directly into the kernel. Well, that's about it. Let me know what you think about these new updates 
to Kali Linux 2021.2 in the comments section below. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.